Welcome to my first model build video. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about myself first of all. I, I have a blood cancer, um, follicular lymphoma. I also have a serious lung condition called bronchiectasis. Now, back in March 2020, when the COVID pandemic hit, um, my health conditions meant that it would be dangerous for me to work. So I had to give up working and I took early medical retirement. Now, retirement's a wonderful thing. Except I get bored stiff. I mean, I've been shielding now for the best part of 21 months, a prisoner in my own home, basically, in a, in a self-imposed prison in my own home, only going out for, for hospital appointments and things like that. I mean, I, I, my health is so bad that I can't even do work in the garden or things like that or, or DIY. So... I, I get bored shitless. All I all I do is play on the computer, uh, and, and watch Amazon Prime or Netflix, and it really, really is boring. So I decided what I needed to do was was a hobby. Now I last built a model probably in 1997. Um, I don't think I built any. I moved to this house in 1997, and I don't think I built any since I've been here. So it's uh it's gonna be 20 24 or more years since i last built a model but i'm gonna have a go and this is my first one and it's the uh uss missouri uh by a company called peace call there we go uh it's an all metal kit that requires no glue i thought i'd go for simplicity um and that's the kit that we're going to be building in this video i'm going to tell you a couple of things though uh, this is the second, no, it's the third time that I've recorded this intro because I've made a couple of mistakes um, during the filming. And um, I can't go back and unmake the model, so I've had to record a slightly different intro to what I did before. Um, and I've also made a couple of mistakes on the model as well. And when it says no glue required, um, yes, I do require glue, but that's, that's me and my mistakes. Um, you'll find out as the video goes along. So anyway, let's get on with it. Oh, I've got to tell you that in the early stages, what I've done is I've sped the build up to 10 times normal speed. Otherwise, you're going to be here for hours watching it because I can only do a model kit. Uh, I can only work between one and two hours a day. So it's taken me three hours so far to get to this video done, which is part one. And then we've still got part two and three to come yet. So <laughs> um, anyway, enough of that. Let's let's actually get on with looking at the kit and getting on with the build. I'm actually going to take a little bit of time to go through some of the tools that I've used to build this with you. This is my head magnifier and these lenses are interchangeable. At the moment it's fitted with 5 times lenses but I also have 1.5, 2.5 and 3 times lenses. I use this mainly for the close up and fiddly work. Sometimes even five times magnification isn't enough. This is my other head magnifier. It's mainly used for jewellery and it's currently fitted with 10 times lenses. It comes with two LED lights. The lenses are interchangeable and I have 15 times, 20 times and 25 times magnification. And yes, I've had to use 25 times magnification on this kit on some of the fiddly bits. This is one of the most important modelling tools to have. It's a pair of nippers or side cutters, whatever you want to call it. These are made by a company called Hasang and they're made of Japanese steel and they are razor sharp. And the pinch point at the front is so small it can really get into some tight places to nip things off of the tree. Comes with a case and a maintenance kit which consists of oil and an Allen key. A set of needle files for deburring when you've cut something off of the tree. A pair of straight pliers. A pair of curved pliers. And another nipper. Well, it's not really a nipper. It's a toenail cuticle cutter, but it's razor sharp. And again, it can get into small places. This is my cordless rotary tool. It's such a handy gadget. I didn't know I needed this until I actually had it. I mainly use this for grinding off any burrs that have been left when I've removed a part from a tree. As you can see, I fitted it with a grinding stone, which, like I said earlier, is handy for removing burrs when you've taken a part off of a tree and you can't get the trimmers in there to cut it. Um, 
and it's better than the nail files or needle files because I can actually it, it, it removes things a lot faster. Sometimes you find a mould line left on a model, so I also use this to sand those away. I've got a selection of different grit sandpapers there, and it makes a fantastic job of that. Very handy tool. A pair of bent nose tweezers, very handy for bending tabs and getting into places where my pliers can't. So, let's see what else we've got in here. This is the lubricating oil for my Hassang nippers. I use the oil in this precision oiler to oil my nippers. These are flathead tweezers, very handy for picking things up off of a mat or for holding some of the smaller bits while I work on them. This is actually a nail buffer and polisher. Uh, it's got four different grits on it, and I use that for just polishing and buffing on some models. Uh, you can get one of these in a makeup kit. This is the Peace Cool Toolkit for folding and making their all metal models. This is such a handy little toolkit, and until I purchased it, I didn't realise that I actually needed it. This large one here has a pointed tip, but it also has a slot cut into the pointed tip. And what you do with that is you actually push the slot onto the tabs and twist it to bend the tabs. It's also got a flat end with a slot on it as well. These little things here, these, these, are, these are great for forming the bits. Um, there's a lot of, on the, on the model that I'm currently making, the Missouri, there's a lot of bits that need to be bent and twisted, and you form them round these. As you can see, you've got you've got five different sizes, and it really is a very useful toolkit. This. Some of the parts in this kit I can just about see with five times magnification. So forming them, if they're semicircular, and twisting them, you really need these little tools to do it. Um, they're absolutely fantastic for that. Here we have some reverse tweezers. They are handy for gripping things because they lock on like they've just done with my finger there. These are exactly what they look like. They are dental tools. This is a dental mirror and a dental pick. That's very handy, actually, when you're working on some models because you need to see behind them while you're looking at the front to push things through or pull things through. And the pick is great for getting into those tiny little corners and just twisting and pushing things around. In the case of this model, it's been very handy for getting into the chimney stacks and bending the tabs behind those. Enough of that. Let's now take a look at the model itself. It comes in a small box, just like this. It really isn't very big, this box at all, which rather took me by surprise because I've always expected model boxes to be bigger than what they actually are. Well, let's see what we've got inside. Well, we've got the, you, I don't know what you call them, the tree or the sprue. Um, you've got three of those. Did you notice the box opens up so you can get to them? You've got three of those. And you've got this little bag of bits. Now, I happen to know that that was the barrels they put down as a separate bag of bits. You've got a sheet of instructions and you've got a tree reference guide. The barrels don't actually come on the tree. They come separate. This tree is one of three. Um, they've got some really small parts on them. And they're really difficult to work with when they've got a bright light shining on them because the, the tree actually reflects the bright light. That's one thing I didn't realise about uh, scale model um, all metal kits. Right, what we have here is we have the reference guide. Now that gives you a picture of all three sprues or trees, whatever you want to call them. And it shows you where each number part is. So in the instructions, it will refer to part A13. Well, all you do is you look on this chart, A13, um, and you can see exactly where the one you want is. 
Each part is colour coded on this diagram, which makes them very easy to find. This is the instruction sheet. This kit comes with two of these. Uh, all you do is you open it up, and the very first thing you notice is it tells you what tools you should need to complete this kit. The next thing it shows you is a diagram on how to bend certain tabs. Certain tabs have to be bent at 90 degrees. Other ones can be twisted, and it shows you how to do them. It also shows you which side you should fold the parts in, either the photo etch side up or the plane side up. The instructions I found very, very easy to follow as long as you start at the beginning. What it does is it tells you how many parts you need and what order to assemble them in and which uh, part number it is. What you then need to do is you then need to look at the other diagram to find out on which tree that part is. Once you've found out which tree it's on, all you need to do is find the tree to find the part. One of the only complaints about this kit is that once you've found the tree, the parts aren't actually marked on the tree. So you've got to go back and refer to the diagram exactly where the parts are to try and pull it out. And they're very small and very shiny, so it's very difficult to see. So you, it is essential you use that diagram to find these parts. This is a stage I found to be very, very fiddly. In fact, the only way that I could get the parts off of the tree was to use my magnifier of at least five times because some of these parts are less than 1.5 millimeters across. Right, I think it's time to put these away and get on with making our model. Because I was a dickhead, I've lost the first part, so we're actually jumping in about part three of the build. One of the things about this kit that I find frustrating is that the parts, especially in the first eight steps, are very, very tiny. Some of them are only 1.5 millimetres across, and some of the folds I've got to make are less than a millimetre with the tabs. Now, I've got arthritis in the base of both thumbs, which means that I struggle to make some of these small folds and cut these things out. Um, and the only way I can do it is by loading up with painkillers first <laughs> and then when I'm working just smother my thumbs in Voltarol. Um, but I can get around that, that's not a problem. I, although I can't help feeling that these kits would be more suited to somebody with more agility in their hands, a bit younger, because they're so small. But like I said, I, I'm getting on with it and so we're, we're doing it, it's working, but it means that I can only work on a kit for about an hour to two hours at a time because my hands get too painful otherwise. This is another dickhead mistake that I've made. My, my level of dickheadedness while making this video knows no bounds, and uh, yeah, I'm using this as a learning process. I'm filming it on a Galaxy S9, and I'm using the front camera, and what I forgot to do is I forgot to reverse the image. Now, I can reverse the image in my editing software, but this already looks disjointed enough, and it's suddenly going to be really odd when it suddenly flips between two different angles. So, no, I'm going to leave it as it is, just to remind me that I'll have to be a bit more careful next time
If you're going to be building this model, I really can't stress this enough. You really need these piece cool tools. Um, there's a link in my blog um, to the listing on Amazon. These are essential, um, especially this one. This one is great for bending tabs, especially the, the bits that I'm working on at the moment are really small and I can't get pliers in there or tweezers in there, but I can get this in there to bend the tabs. You'll find that as you build up the superstructure, you really need to get in some tight spaces. And also these for forming some of the curves. It's uh, I couldn't work without it, although I have got a mandrel for that as well. But essentially, I'd recommend this piece called Toolkit. When I first started building this model, I was doing it in my den, which is also my computer room, and I had a space of about half a metre by half a metre. I soon realised this wasn't going to be enough. So what I've done is I've moved into another room now, and this is my new modelling area, which I hope gives me enough space to do all the work that I need. Just when I thought I'd come across all of the small fiddly bits, I came across even smaller fiddly bits, which I found extremely frustrating. So frustrating that neither my desktop magnifier or my five times headband magnifier could actually enable me to work on them. So I had to go to my big 10 times magnifier uh, with the LED lights, which made it very difficult. I, I've got to admit, this kit has got some really small fiddly bits in there and it's probably not suited to somebody that's got limited mobility. You need to have dexterity in your hands. I mean, not only did this cause me problems being able to see the bits, but it also caused me problems with my arthritis having to move to the, these little small bits, but I got round it and I got there in the end. Hopefully, I think I'm coming to the end of the small fiddly bits because I'm starting to get some of the big superstructure pieces put together. And I can't stress this enough. The small fiddly bits are really getting on my nerves. And I'm really hoping that this is the end of them.
This is the first time during the making of this model that I've had to use my deburring tool. Um, it's a rotary tool and I've just got a little stone grinder on there because no matter how much I tried I couldn't nip that tiny bit of uh, burr off of it so I had to use that and that's really handy. I also use my deburring tool as a paint mixing tool but I'll tell you more about that in another video. Well, I got that wrong, didn't I? I've had to get out my big magnifier again. These small bits, they really, really cause me issues. I keep thinking I've come into the end of them, but I keep now, I've had a good look at the trees. I can see there's even more to come later on in the model. I, I can't stress it enough, these small fiddly bits. They're really, really suited for somebody with better hand dexterity than I've got. And now we come across the first mistake I've made. I mean, this is a really big mistake. I, I was at the end of my working time for this day. I'd been at it for two hours and somehow I wasn't really paying attention and I formed this particular part inside out. Then I made a slightly minor mistake in thinking that if I folded it the correct way, that would be all right. However, like most metal, when you bend it one way, then bend it the other, you stress it and it breaks. So it broke. Um, and it broke into the four separate parts. But I had a clever idea. I was going to use super glue to fix it because super glue fixes everything. This is a bad idea. All right. This is a really bad idea. Do not use super glue. I super glued my fingers to, my, to each other. I super glued my fingers to the parts I'd broken. I super glued the parts I'd broken to my uh, cutting mat. I super glued everything to everything except what I wanted to super glue. And because I was using a standard two gram super glue tube, the super glue was coming out too fast. Again, this is a learning process. This is something that I learned as I went along. So I put that aside and I've got some acetone and I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to re-stick it. But I'm going to do it with UV curing resin, which will be in the second video. That will actually be at the start of the second video. But learn from my mistake. Don't use super glue to try and correct your mistakes and pay attention to what you're doing. From about step 10, I'm starting to get into larger superstructure bits and I'm starting to enjoy it more. And some of the earlier bits that I made are now starting to come together to make much larger superstructure bits. And I can actually see the model forming. If, if I've got one, another criticism of the piece called Talk, it is what I would like is I would like the parts to be labeled as to what they are, like gun turret A, radar director turret A, anything like that. So just to give me an idea of whereabouts in the ship they are and what it is that I'm looking at, um, because I'm constantly trying to guess. And when I'm looking, I'm constantly Googling 
to find out exactly what it is I'm building so that I've got a rough idea of what the finished thing looks like. But that's only a minor criticism. I can work around that as I do with everything else. I've now come to the end of what is three days hard work on this model kit. That's not three whole days. I haven't spent three whole days on it. It's been about two hours a day for three days because two hours is about all I can do. Um, otherwise, I get headaches and eye strain uh, and everything else. I, I'm still enjoying it. And I've got to the point now where I can actually see some recognisable bits. And that's given me a great sense of satisfaction.
this has been about two and a half hours work and I'm starting to make mistakes. I made a mistake on the conning tower, putting that together. I'll come back to that in a minute. But I've also made a mistake in recording the video. What I didn't realize was when I was recording this section, just before I started recording, somehow I knocked the power camera, the power cable out of the camera. And as the power was running down on the camera, the camera started to defocus very slightly. Now, I didn't notice until after I completed the section, which is annoying because I can't go back and refilm it. So I'm really sorry if this section is slightly out of focus. Again, this is another learning process for the second video. The conning tower, yeah. The conning tower is only held on by a little millimetre flake of, of, of a sliver of metal, and I broke it. But I learnt my lesson with the superglue. No superglue. Um, again, this is something that I'm going to fix with... Um, UV curing resin, and that's coming in the next video. So if you need to see the cleanup and the fixing, you need to watch the next video as well. I'm also coming to the end of this video now because I've got as far as I can get with this model without having to, without going back and repairing the damage that I've already done. Otherwise, it won't look right. So I've got to just finish off what I'm doing now and then come back and repair the damage that I've done, which, as I said, is coming in part two. We are finally now at the end of this video. This is coming up to the end of part one. Um, a couple of things I wanted to say. First of all, I must apologise about the quality of my voice. Um, you must understand that I have I have cancer and I have a lung condition called bronchiectasis. And both of these are acting to cause my voice to sound croaky like that. There's nothing I can do about that. This is it. This is my voice for life. <coughs> and uh, I'm sorry about that. You, you just have to live with it. It's been fun making this model. <laughs> it's the first time that I've ever made an all-metal model, I must admit. And it's been an experience, and it's one that I'm willing to repeat. The other things that have gone on in this video is that I've had to give myself a crash course in three programs, which is Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, and Adobe After Effects. Oh, my God, After Effects. Um, if you've never used After Effects before and you've had no background in it like me, then it is the most frightening program in the world. But I am getting to grips with it. This is my first go at making a long video like this. I don't have the production facilities of some of these big YouTubers. I'm, I'm just that one guy in, in my den at home trying to do the best that I can. It seems a bit disjointed in places. I'm sorry. Um, some places the voiceover doesn't quite match what's going on. In other places, I can't superimpose my image because of the way that I recorded things. Um, but that's been a learning process for me, and I've quite enjoyed it. In, in the making of this video, the learning process, I think it's been just as much fun as making the model. Obviously, you're interested in the model making, but for me, I'm doing a lot. I've got no background in, in video making at all, and this is something that I've thrown myself into in just a few short weeks, and I'm learning as I'm going along, and I like it. Anyway, I'm going to leave you now with as far as I've got, and to see the rest, you need to watch part two of the video because I can't go any further without fixing the mistakes that I've made on the model. Like I said, it's not a big box production where they've got four or five different kits, the same kit standing by. So that if they make a mistake on one kit, they can suddenly build the second kit up to that level to correct that mistake. They can't. I can't do that. I've got one kit and one kit only, and it's one chance and one chance only. And if I fuck it up, I have to deal with it. So that's the start of video two, where I repair it and I carry on building the model. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please, please, please subscribe and hit that bell. Thank you.